Hey everyone, this is Matt from Simplistic Reviews with uh, another Simplistic interview. Uh, this time, I won't say we're live from the Fantasia uh, Film Fest 2020. Uh, everybody's at home, like just doing their own thing. But um, no, nevertheless, we have a great, I have a great interview for you guys today. Um, one of the first films I saw from the film festival this year uh, left quite an impression on me. I'm sure it's left quite, a, quite an impression on quite a few different people too. So <laughs> I have uh, Ryan O'Kruger uh, here today, all the way from South Africa. You're, you're in South Africa right now, Ryan, right? Yeah, South Africa, Cape Town. Cape Town. So we're talking about his, um, his, new, his first film, his first uh, feature length film, uh, Fried Berry. Um, and it's quite something. But first, Ryan, how are you doing today? O over uh, pretty much on the other side of the world for me. Yeah, well, it's like 4 p.m. here, so um, yeah, it's going all right. We're still quite strict with uh, lockdown and, and stuff like that, in a sense of, uh, I think we're actually one of the strictest countries. The, the cigarettes are banned, alcohol is banned, we have, oh, no. we have a 10 p.m. curfew. Um, there is bar, like bars and restaurants open now, but it's it's still quite hectic. But from tomorrow... Uh, they've uplifted the cigarettes and alcohol, which is great. I was about to say, if you have bars and everything open, I mean, it's like you need to have cigarettes and booze and everything like that. That's yeah, the only, yeah, that's the only that's way weird. this economy is going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's weird. But everybody's, this, yeah, there's, the people are like selling uh, stuff here and there, but it's, people need to live. People are, you know, things are going to, there's, there's so many places that have closed down, it's not going to reopen. So, I mean, you're taking all those, people's jobs away and ruining their businesses. So everybody's also like, fuck, we need to live and we need to sell what we sell, you know? Yeah, it's a, fi it's a fine line between being, I guess, responsible, uh, socially conscious and uh, being considerate, I guess, of everybody else as well too. It's, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, no, it's crazy. We li we're, we're living in uh, crazy, crazy, crazy times. Yeah, as, as, long, as if it hasn't been cliched enough to say that we're living in the new normal, crazy times, yeah. everything else. Yeah, I hate that. I hate, I hate that uh, people go, oh, it's the new normal. I'm it's like, a, no, like, please don't no, say that. I hope this is not new. Yeah. And I, I, hope I, I, I don't want to look down the line in like two years or even a year and people got masks on. I'll be just like, no, you know. Unless they're really cool, like, you know, industrial, like, looking gas masks, and then we're living in, like, Mad Max times, then I can maybe accept yeah. it and be like, okay, well, at least this is kind of interesting, and, you know, things are about yeah. to get really cool, so. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's the whole Blade Runner, you know, like, on the, on the sets of Blade Runner, you know, you have all the, you know, in the future, and everybody's got the masks on from, like, China or Japan. Yeah. <laughs> sort of, sort of vibe. Blade Runner meets Doomsday meets uh, Mad Max meets any other post-apocalyptic <laughs> film we love. So, <laughs> well, thanks uh, for coming in for a little bit, Ryan, and uh, you know, chatting with me about the film and everything. Um, but That's absolute pleasure. But I guess just to kind of get started, tell tell the audience a little bit about about you, kind of how you got started, where, where your your humble beginnings kind of come from, and then we'll, well, well come into the I've film. always I've always. Uh... I've always been into film. Um, I think it was probably mainly like my, my dad. My dad used to always, you know, make me watch all these when I was a kid. So I was like an 80s kid. So, I mean, mm -hmm. growing up, I, I used to, my dad, you know, make me watch all the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s movies. So, yeah, I was always, you know, introduced to it at, at such an early age. And then at one point, you know, I got my own, like, little camera and I would make all these it's kind, of, it kind of like, uh, you know, the movie Super 8, you know, where they've yep. got their camera and they go out in the summer. That was basically my childhood. That's, 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 what, that's what I used to do. And then, you know, you make all these uh, little shit films with your friends. And as time goes on, you, you know, you get better. And you know, then it just leads to down the road of getting uh, a crew together. So you're not doing everything that yourself. And, yeah, I just surround myself with amazing people that do, you know, whether they're a DP or an art director or a, you know, you know, editor and so on. And just, uh, you know, it's uh, making films a, a collaborative thing, which is, I think is very important to, you know, surround yourself with people that you admire and the people that you would like and good at what they, at what they do. Well, you grew up in, um, or in England, right? In the UK. So. Yeah. yeah I, so I've lived in South Africa now for about 11, I think about 11 years. Mm -hmm. So my mother's English and my father's uh, South African. 
Well, uh, so what, what brought you over to, was it just kind of like, Hey, we're moving, we're, we're picking up everything. We're going to, we're moving to, to Cape Town or South Africa. And this is the, the new life for you at this point. It was, it was more of a thing where, cause I, I started out doing acting first and then I went into directing. Mm-hmm. So most people that you just normally meet here and there, that it's more of like, Oh, I'm an actor or whatever that, that people that do do stuff in the industry. And it's more of like a hobby because mm-hmm. you know you, there's not enough work and as an actor you, you know you either get the audition or you don't get the audition and so it's one of those things that but every time i went to south africa on holiday i ended up uh you know i ended up getting an acting job getting a directing job and for me it just it just made sense it was like shit every time i come come here i'm getting <laughs> work so i should be living here instead of you know, doing all these shitty part-time jobs that I hated and then getting, getting to do, you know, acting or directing. And for me to, to move to Cape Town, South Africa. And, and for the past 11, 12 years, I've only ever done my acting and directing and, and absolutely nothing else, which is, uh, which I'm very fortunate and very humble to say that, you know, I'm, it's nice to constantly work and every day when I, I am on set, I'm just like, Oh, this is great. I love it. So I do really appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working uh, just as much as the actor that I am as a director. So I'm very, I'm very lucky to have that. But as a director, I have more control mm-hmm. over my career as an actor, you know, you can go to, if I think about all the auditions that I've ever been to and all the ones that you actually get, it's, yeah. you know, it's a big difference, but that's not, that's, that's, that's what, what the industry is all about. Yeah. If you were handed everything all the time, it's like, oh, well, this is easy work, you know, at this point, it's like, well, why is this so difficult? Yeah. I mean, if, if, <laughs> yeah, if it, I mean, if it was so easy, I mean, I've, I've grafted at this now for like 22 years of, of hard work and, it, and it's, you know, I think if you put, you know, that time and energy into it, then it will happen, you know, it happen. it's just, it's always been that when, when is this going to happen? And, and it just, yeah, it, it actually happens without you realizing it because you're just always kind of doing it. And then maybe sometimes you should be more shocked and other times you actually miss that moment in time where you're like, oh shit, and you, it just becomes, you know, it's still work. I love it yeah. and I enjoy it and I still laugh every time I get paid for it because I'm just like, this is good. I'm having a good time and the, and the pain for me. <laughs> That's the whole thing. It's, yeah. it's all... <laughs> Laughing and knowing you're, it's like, you're paying me to do this. This is, this is laughable. It's like, I'll keep yeah. doing it though. As long as you keep sending the check, as long as the check killers, I'm, I'm good with all that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now, you, now you started everything kind of with uh, music videos and shorts and stuff like that. So, and uh, just kind of getting an idea of your style. It, it, it seemed almost kind of like, you know, a uh, Mark Roman act, Finchery type, like every, I mean, obviously the, these people had big, big influences on the style and everything's very spacey out of this world type, type things like that. Um, and then along comes uh, your short for fried berry, which is, you know, you, you can see that the seeds planted uh, for the feature in that, but what was the kind of like, um, I mean, obviously everybody was like super into the, into the shorts and then did like the light bulb just kind of click like, Hmm. I think if we tweak a few things and make this, this, yeah. we're going to have a full length film type thing. Well, to, to be honest, like, so I'm known as a music video director in South Africa and the music videos I shoot, I'm known for narrative story, storytelling within, uh, you know, music videos. And over the years, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, I'm lucky as a director in South Africa to be able to always do my own concepts for music videos. But at the same time, I'm still in a box in, in a sense of this has to go on TV. This has to fit with the style of the music that I'm you know, doing the visuals for. So I've always kind of been in a box. And then what happened was I, I decided to do a four year project, which I'm still working on now to do eight experimental films. Mm-hmm. And it just happened to be that Fry Barry was the first experimental that I did. And the reason why I wanted to make these experimentals, because I wanted to do exactly what I wanted to do and not worry about uh, a studio saying, oh, you can't do this, or a client saying, oh, you can't do this, or you're not going to be able to get this on TV. So it was a chance for me just to do whatever I wanted mm-hmm. and to put my style to 
you know, to something. And Fry Barry, the shows, it was just a three minute experimental about a heroin addict that lives in this abandoned building that has his highs and lows and we're watching him on his latest hit. It's almost like a drug PSA, like don't do fucking drugs. <laughs> sort of I was about to say, it kind of reminds me that, yeah. you feel, uh, Kind of designed to make you feel uncomfortable to, to watch it, but short enough to appreciate it. You just feel like dirty after after watching it. Yeah, it has that, that grind and that grime and sheen all over kind of thing. Like, man, where yeah. like where like where did you find that that uh that warehouse to shoot in? Was it just kind of scout shooting and saying, This looks like a winner right here? It's like, but did you have to do much to it to make it uh, even filthier or was it no, 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 already? I didn't I didn't I didn't actually I didn't actually touch anything in the place. I think there was the only one thing that we moved was there was uh I think one of the opening shots there was like a like a fence or something like a metal fence that we just shot that I moved and we just shot behind that everything else is like it is how it is that but that actual building's been knocked down now shortly wow. after we shot the film the 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 building got knocked down it's like a block of flats so the thing is with the short there was never i mean the short you know went to about 60 we had about 60 uh, official selections around the world at festivals, we had like 13 awards. Then we started getting all this random fan art, but it was never meant to to be a feature or that. And like I said, it was just the first experimental thing that I wanted to do. And it was just random how it, how it just fell together. But the thing was that, uh, obviously I knew it was onto something because of all this fan art and it was so ra- random to get fan art off a, a, a you know like short, a short. right <laughs> yeah so it was just like it was like super random and i found out by mistake and i was like oh my god that like that looks like barry that, and i was like oh my god it is barry and then and then it, and then i think other people might have saw other people doing it and then it was just like a chain like reaction from that but i never thought about doing a feature because gary green my lead guy he's not a he's I've worked with him for about 11 years. His background, he's actually an extra. So he's actually just does extra work. He's not a trained actor or anything. So when we, so when, I, you know, if, when I, when I got the idea to do the feature film, that, well, let me tell you, let me go back a bit. The, the, yeah. the funny <laughs> thing about this film is that, that I've come close so many times, about five times to making a feature film. Nothing to do with Fry Barry, just uh, I've got like, all these scripts that I've got and producers have approached me and said like, you know, we want to, we want you to, uh, we want to work with you and we want to do this film. And then as a director, I get excited going, Oh shit, finally, finally I get to shoot a feature. And then it just fades away. And then the next one comes along, I get excited and that fades away. And then I just stop getting excited. And I'm, I'm just like, you know, the last person said to me, he shook my hand and he wouldn't let go of my hand. He's like, Ryan, we are making this movie. And it's going to happen. And I was like, dude, like, I've heard I that story. believe in what I was saying, but I've heard the story so many times and it's not your money, it's his money. So if he yeah. says yes, then you say yes, <laughs> then I say yes. So, and again, it didn't happen. And at that time in my career, I, I was just fed up. And that's why I wanted to do the experimentals and uh, cut a long story short, I went through a, a really bad time. I had an operation on my kidney. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lost a girl, a girlfriend at the time. We broke up. Uh, I had my cat got ill with cancer. Uh, oh I got sepsis and nearly died after my operation. And I went into depression and it was this whole big fucking thing. And I just hit rock bottom. And mm-hmm. then I said to myself, you know, what is the one thing I've always wanted to do in life? And it was to make a film. Mm-hmm. So I've got all these other scripts. Well, probably would have been way fucking easier to shoot than Fried Barry. But when I got the idea and I just thought, fuck, this is the one, I know that this is the one to do. So at that time, my producer, James C. Williamson, that I produced Fry Barry with, I only knew him for about a month, maybe a month and a half. And we shot like two experimentals together. And then I said to him, I had this idea. In three days, I wrote a 50% scene, brief scene breakdown for Fry Barry. And it was just like, Barry goes here, Barry does this, Barry does that. And that was it. It was super, super brief. Mm-hmm. I wrote six pieces of dialogue for six actors. And then that he's not a trained actor. And I've worked with him over the years. And he's, 
you know, his parts have become a little bit bigger and featured over the years with the stuff that I've done. But I knew that the, I had to make the movie a certain way or mm -hmm. it wouldn't work. So I had to do the whole improv thing. I kept Gary in the dark completely. And there was no script. And uh, <laughs> Gary was almost like my puppet because I, I, I would say, don't do this, don't do that. Just do exactly what I say. So it had to be the right film, the right character, the right way to direct it for it to actually work. So, and that was the thing. So when I was like speaking to Gary, I'll be like, okay, uh, now it's like the shots on Gary and I need the reactions. So I'll be like, okay, give me this face, give me that face, give me, uh, do this, do that. Or I'd say, okay, on this take, just do only exactly what I say and don't, don't I don't, it's like everybody else is improvising, but he's not mm -hmm. improvising, he's taken like, I mean, everything was workshopped on the day, but it was just like to, to, to make it right, and perfect, I had to do in a certain way. So when I approached my producer and I said to him, I only did like two projects with him. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanna make a film and I wanna make it next month. And he was like, whoa, like, why do you wanna shoot it next month? And I was like, well, if we don't shoot next month, it's never gonna happen and it's just mm -hmm. gonna get postponed and pushed back. And then, and then he's like, have you got a script? And I was like, well, no, because of this and this, I have to do it a certain way. Yeah. So it was just a thing that everything kind of fell into place pretty soon. But it's it's actually ridiculous that I kind of knew all along that you know I can't wait for all these other producers and all these people to give me money to make a film. And I was just like, fuck, I'm going to do it myself. And yeah. it took me like to nearly die to realize that. Not to say, and right? Then be like, <laughs> and then be like, fuck, I'm going to do it. But like Fry Barry, like. It, the, making that movie has like saved my life in like so many ways just like I put everything into that movie and it was it was such a fun movie to make like we had the best time making that film it was so fucking funny every day we were laughing our heads off and to be in that moment to be organic and to you know come up with ideas on the spot because normal films you've got the script it's set you can only do this, it's up to the director to direct it a little bit differently or the actor to present the character a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So to be in that moment with all those people and, and workshop it right there and then and coming up with those good ideas, that's what the film is. That's, that's, you know, that's how it was made. So if it wasn't made like that, then it wouldn't be the same film at all. Yeah, I mean, just looking back at the film and you explaining it the way you're explaining it, I mean, I feel like, you're the you're the alien inside Gary the entire time. <laughs> so, uh, not not the not the I guess bury the lead a little bit on the actual film and everything. It's about you know alien abduction and everything. So, yeah, uh, and just seeing the reaction shots and the insert shots you, you do with some of the actors who come up to Barry after he's already been, I guess I could I'll, I'll just say impregnated by the alien in so many ways, and yeah, yeah. His, his reaction between. Um, well, one thing, one, 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 one scene I want to ask, ask you in particular is the, the woo scene. Now, yeah. was that your uh, baby kind of like, Gary, like, Gary, this is what you're going to do. You're, you're going to bed with your wife and you're just going to be yelling woo the entire yeah. time. <laughs> well, this, this is the thing about Fry Barry. So a lot of the people that have watched it wants to watch it again which yeah. is a fucking great, a great thing. But there's so many little things that you might not get the first time, but you get the second time. Mm -hmm. So it was ideas like when it came to when he has sex with the, the girl from the club or his yeah. wife, uh, you know, it's like I shot the club scene first. So you might mm -hmm. not, you might, I don't think you got this because you, the, the way what you just said then. Mm -hmm. But for example, uh, the DJ in the club goes, make some noise. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> so when he meets the girl, she mm -hmm. says, like, for fuck's sake, we, uh, we, we, we say something, will you make some noise? And then Gary's just like, woo, like the yeah. DJ. <laughs> so it's like, it's, so it's like connected. So that's the thing. So he like mimics a lot. So every time, mm -hmm. you know, that's the noise he makes when, <laughs> when yeah, he yeah. has sex. Whatever. Everything is just like, you know, he's like a sponge. He's just taking in it, all, all his exactly. environment and everything. It's like an overload. I mean, the whole thing is very, it's like, excess overloaded the entire time and you know yeah. i mean i've never been to cape town so i don't know how crazy you guys get down there in cape town yeah. but it, I mean, it put it this way it, 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 maybe it, not <laughs> yeah well the other thing is i wanted to shoot fry barry how we've never seen cape town before so yeah. a lot of international movies come here to shoot pretending that it's this country or that country or mm -hmm. a different country 
So, and when there is films based in South Africa, it's also shot a certain way and it's beautiful and this and this and this. And it, Cape Town is beautiful. It's a very mm -hmm. beautiful place. Uh, but there's every city that you go to in the world, there's the dark side mm -hmm. of life and there's the dark side of things. So I wanted to show, I wanted to show Cape Town like it's never been shown before. And so I wanted to get, you know, the griminess of, uh, you know, the late night CD side of things where it's just, you know, it's just edgier and, and you know, the gritty side of Cape Town that we, that we never see on movies ever. So it's, it's, it was nice to like show, show that off. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, because um, not, not a lot of films are, I mean, I, I, being being in the U.S., I, I guess I'm not exposed to just kind of Cape Town as a whole, just seeing like from a feature film. I mean, I guess my biggest takeaway from like South African director is probably Neil Blomkamp and yeah. seeing what, what he's done and everything. And it's kind of, that kind of shows, you know, the futuristic side I guess, of Cape Town in so many ways. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean District, yeah, District 9, that's, yeah. you know, and that was shot in Joburg. Yeah, Joe Big, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's just like, and that's one side of Joe Big that they've <laughs> showed. There's like, there's like a whole other side of Joe Big. But the thing is with South Africa, it's like you've got like, you know, you've got like Durban, Cape Town, and Joe Big, and they're completely all different. Mm -hmm. Like they're all different. So I, I live in Cape Town, and I, I think Cape Town's the, the best place out of those three cities to go to. But it, they're all, they might, they may as well be three different countries because they're so different they're completely like cape town is more like alternative cape town is more like european almost mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more progressive or something like that just kind of yeah that, that's yeah. that type of sweetie hmm. well um with with fried berry i mean this is just kind of a cheeky question i'll just kind of ask you um if if aliens were to come or if they're already here at this point do you think they would enjoy Cape Town or would they, would they enjoy it themselves or would they enjoy it inside the body of like a heroin addict who's out of his mind and everything like that? <laughs> well, I think, uh, well, well, you see that, that was one of the reasons with the character, like when, I, when you get like a, like a concept and somebody's pitching a concept, the best concept to pitch is like a two sentence, concept of a story yeah. instead mm -hmm. of trying to go into this whole thing and confuse the person that you're trying to pitch it to because fried barry is basically about uh, a heroin addict that gets abducted by aliens and it's an alien tourist on holiday yeah that's that's what it is and, and and his journey that's what it is i also say to people it's like a road movie without the car and barry is the car and we're just going with the flow and we're, we're meeting all these different people and we go to the next person and that's and that's what it is. So, I mean, the funny thing is, it's just like, I think like before, like District 9 and stuff like, you know, before District 9, it's always, obviously it's always America. It's like, if the aliens yeah. come, they always go. They you have know, to they come to America, go. obviously. It's the only country in the America. world. <laughs> so, so yeah. And it's, and it, and that's the thing about Fry Barry. It's like, you know, it has elements of horror, has elements of sci-fi. I mean, there's a, but it's more like the film more than that, because there's the, you know, there's the character of, you know, the alien being starting to be more human. And mm -hmm. there's that, you know, the wife, which is the, the heart of the movie, which is realizes like, in fact, the alien Fry Barry is actually better than the real drug addict Fry Barry. You know what I mean? And she yeah. falls back in love with this, with this guy, but it, he's now an alien and he's not, he's not the original drug addict bastard Barry. Yeah. <laughs> well, you even, uh, even the end of the film kind of leaves it very ambiguous to see what will kind of happen with her and, her, and her, I guess her new prostitute friend and, and Barry yeah, as well yeah. too. So I, I like the way you ended it where it, <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil and spoil it or anything right. like that for anybody who hasn't, who hasn't seen the film in, in Canada or anywhere else. Cause I know you got, you premiered back in January and everything like that. So a lot of people were able to see the film, but I want to bury the lead because it, it is a fun, crazy road trip of a hallucinatory nightmare alien abduction film type thing going on so every every I mean, other who, qualifier can say yeah. who doesn't want to see alien uh, a, cr a crackhead alien you know <laughs> i mean it it it's funny because like watching the film uh near the end too i kind of got this like et vibe i don't know if you were like you know at all kind of yeah. like you know it yeah, kinda, that was like one of my it's that like was e one of my references <laughs> yeah uh, exactly and 
I mean, some people have said, you know, it's like, oh, this film is like E.T. on crack mm -hmm. or like an adult version of, uh, of E.T. And that, like, like I said, like my biggest influences are like 80s films. So, I mean, mm -hmm. with, within Fried Barry, there's so many influences, whether it's like Starman of John Carpenter mm -hmm. or uh, 70s, uh, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, Terminator, Aliens. There's, there's so many... E. T. There's so many, there's so many references to like movies that I that I admire and love from the from the eighties. Yeah, and let's see how we can spin this and make this like the most anti version of all those films, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now, um, I, I guess one, one more question. This is more about Gary um, on the set. Was there anything that when Gary was, um, you know, being filmed? Was he ever taken aback by anything that he's like, look, you're going to react to this? And he was like, whoa, hold on a second here. That, that's a little, that's a little crazy, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll put it this way. So when, when, like I said, Gary was kept in the dark mm -hmm. every day. He didn't know what he was doing until I was telling him. But the, the one thing he didn't know at the beginning when I sat him down at my place and I said, this is, we're going to make this film and this is what it's about. But there is one thing I'm going to need to ask you for. And before I even finish that sentence, he said to me, I will not be naked. I will not be naked. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, well, Gary, like, there's like a few scenes that I, you're not going to see your bits. Yeah. We'll get a prosthetic for that and whatever. But there's a, there's a few scenes that we are, I'm going to need you naked. But we're not going to see your bits. And, but we have to do it. And he's like, okay. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going to have to do it. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I, I think it was there was that uh, which he fucking like it was amazing like it, even when we were doing some of the scenes I've got the monitor and he's like on all fours getting like probed yeah, yeah. <laughs> probe, and I'm watching the monitor and I'm just laughing and my friends like what what are, you, what are you laughing at I was like look at this guy he's like he's going all out you know he's going all out and he did go all out because he knew that this was his shot this was mm -hmm. his shot at doing something special and and he did an amazing job and every take after take. But the funny thing is with Gary is that because he's not a trained actor and I had to like work with him so closely mm -hmm. to get exactly what I wanted was that, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't, um, I just needed him to do exactly what I said. But it's funny how some of the, the hard things were easy for him to do. Mm -hmm. And some of the, the easy things you know some of the easy things were like really hard to do mm -hmm. so i mean i was just like fuck gary like how can you not get how can you not get this <laughs> so some, some of the simple things was really hard i mean and this is going to be funny now but there was this uh, i haven't actually spoke about this yet so the funny thing was there was just this one scene where after he's had the fight with the chainsaw guy mm -hmm. uh, he comes out the doorway and the girl's waiting to see who's gonna who's gonna walk through the store who, who mm -hmm. won the match yeah. And all he has to do is the camera is there and he comes out <laughs> and he turns. That's all he had to do. Dude, I did like 80 shots. That was the hardest I shot. Can't, the movie. I can't turn left. I can't do yeah. the left so, turn. <laughs> because it was the thing, it was the thing where the kids are making noise. Mm -hmm. So he comes through the door and he's trying to hear that turn and then turn his shoulders. But Gary was going the whole body was moving. <laughs> this. And I'm just like, and then people were looking at me going, Dude, what do you want him to do? I just fucking want him to turn and look left. He needs, he needs to look, <laughs> yeah. but he needs to turn the shoulders and then head that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we did that, and and then I was like, Gary, you got it. You you got it. You just like you hear it, you turn, and then you turn your shoulders. And then he's like, I think I'm doing that. And I'm like, Yep, I can definitely not do that. I said, You just got to listen to me and do that. And then I said, Like, I'll do it for you, and you can watch. And he's like, I'm definitely doing that. I was like, You're not. So there was stuff like that. And that was the hardest shot of the movie. I'm not even joking. That, oh, he wow. was walking through the door. He had like 80 shots. And then and then, uh, then there was the stuff with the lasers. And he was mm -hmm. petrified at the lasers. And I'm like, Gary, just close your eyes. It's just going to scan you. And he was like, yeah, but it might burn like my organs or insides. And I'm like, Gary, it's not real lasers. It's, it's, these aren't so, real. <laughs> yeah. So, so the whole time he was like, can, can, can I open my eyes? I was like, dude, you can keep your eyes. I said, just close your eyes. He said, it's just going to scan you. And uh, so there was that. And then there was the, when he falls into the water on the one uh, mm -hmm. heroin trip where I'm like, Gary, you got to take a breath and fall back into the water and you will, you will sink. 
Mm. And, and then as soon as you sink to the bottom, then you can swim back up. You're going to be all right. So every time he was going into the water, he was going <gasps> and holding his breath and going in. And then he would just like bob like a piece of shit at the top <laughs> of the water. And I'm like, and I'm just like, Gary, like you got to blow all the air out. And then it was, it came to a part where I was just like, he wasn't holding his breath and I would push him in the water. Because the thing was, the camera guy, uh, our DP, Gareth Place, we would have to set the time in. So he would be on the record and then he would go on the water and he would have to hold his breath until he jumps in. And then I'd be yeah. like, Gary, jump in. And then Gary wouldn't jump in and then he would run out, run out of breath. The yeah. camera guy would come up and I'd be like, oh my God. And it just... We need this to work. Like, this needs like to that. sink somehow. <laughs> yeah. So in the end, we put like a we put like a weight belt on his uh, on his jeans, and I just like fucking pushed him in. So he would like, like you're gonna sink. sink. Yeah. Bottom. Yeah. Actors, so man. It, it was it was it, it was funny. It was just stuff like that. And as I said, because he's not a trained actor, yeah. All these things. And that's why I said it had to be the right story, the right character, and the right direction to make it work. Or otherwise, it would it would. It would fall apart but I, as i said he gave 120 percent every time he was always keen to do another take every single time and as i said it was his shot and he knew that you know this is it you know and, and i said to him from day one i said to him you know you might feel intimidated by acting with all these uh you know well-established actors uh, from south africa and stuff mm -hmm. like that i said but you're you're the star of this movie so don't feel intimidated you're not here by mistake. You are perfect. You are Fry Barry. Nobody can do this part better than, better than you. Not even the best actor in the country. You are Fry Barry. And if you just listen to my direction and this and this, then you, people are going to love you and you're going to do amazing. And so that, that, I think that really like picked him up with the energy and he was just like, cool. And, you know, obviously he trusted me and, and I trusted him to listen to me and, and it just worked. And I, and I mean, the people, I mean, he picked up, Best Actor at Fantaspo in uh, Brazil. He mm -hmm. got nominated over here for the Rapid Lion. Um, so, you know, people are loving him, and, it, and which is great because it also makes me know that I've done my job to the best of my uh, ability as well. And I'm so proud of him. And I really hope that, you know, after this film, he, you know, he gets, you know, more acting jobs and stuff. But it's one of those where... You know, he needs the right director, he needs mm -hmm. the right character to do, to be able to do. Because I, lo I love characters and he's yeah. a character. And, and that's why, that's why, you know, I've used him over the years in music videos and short films and stuff like that. And his parts have just got bigger. And when he works in, a, you know, as an extra on these studio films and stuff like that, you know, a lot of the time he does end up getting featured because he's got such a interesting face. So other directors. Yeah. Yeah, so other directors just like me, they're like, "Oh, let's just get a shot of this guy because he looks he looks cool." And that's, yeah. and I'm just happy that um, you know, going from you know being an extra to a lead in a film, and people are like, you know, I mean, he 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 hasn't got the best of names in South Africa for being an extra because he's always that guy who's over over yeah. acting in the yeah. background, and, and the, you know, the scenes about these two people talking, not the dude. You know, doing all this yeah. crazy shit in the background. Hey, hey Gary, um, can you relax is, a little bit? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So, <laughs> so the thing is with that is he just wants to be seen. You know, he's just trying to get his face seen. He's just trying to he's just trying to get out there and he loves, you know, he loves the whole acting thing. So it's and that's why I'm so proud of him. And and I'm so happy that I saw something in him to, you know, bring him out of his shell more and to to be this lead. Because when I told people they said, Who who's your lead? And they know who Gary is, and I'd be like Gary and they're like Gary Gary who I'm like Gary Gary and they're like what Gary yeah, Gary's your lead Gary? I'm like, I'm like how and I'm like well it's perfect he's the best guy for the job and he was he was perfect for the job and without Gary there is no Fry Barry so he is the he is Fry Barry he is the movie so that's that's what makes him special and unique and perfect for for this movie yeah, I mean, uh, that, that was the first thing that kind of like between the uh, the poster and just kind of the still that was used for promotion. I was like, this looks like it, 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 I couldn't quite put my finger on what was going to be happening in this film, but his face immediately just kind of, you know, there's, there's certain actors, there's certain character actors or just any, any actor that immediately you're like, there's something strange going on here. I'm not yeah. sure what it is. It could be the face he's making. It could just be the composition of the shot or something, but... Yeah. 
I knew there was something kind of going on with this guy, and uh, it was. But it's, but it's it's like with casting directors. So as a as an as an as a actor, you know, ca- casting directors put people in a box. Yeah. So for me, when I do acting, I'm either the quirky comedy guy or the the bad guy. I'm either one of those. I'm not going to be the love interest. I'm not going to, you know, do that. And and that's the thing with 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 somebody like Gary or other character people that I work with. It's just like. It's like when you see that poster of Fry Barry, it either screams like horror or like he's definitely a bad guy. Yeah. Like he's definitely, he's, <laughs> he's definitely a bad guy. So, and that's what's great about it. So I think when people see the poster, it's it like, it is what it's saying it is, but it's also, it's not. There's a, there's a whole other thing yeah. that you don't know. And even with the trailer, it's just like, it, it's everything that is in the trailer, but and more. But not what you think it is. So, so you know, we're not lying there about the trailer. But it's like everything that's in the trailer. That's that's the vibe of the film. But there's so much more to come, and and that's the thing. But I also like those trailers that don't really tell you too much. And it's like you watch it and go, I want to watch it. I don't know what the fuck it's about, but I want to yep. watch it. And exactly. I think, and I think, obviously from the trailer and from the poster, you know, you you don't get that there's any comedy whatsoever in it or anything. Yeah. And that's why it's, you know, it has elements of horror, sci-fi. There's that love story in there. There's a lot of dark humor. And it's either you love it or you hate it. It's going to be one or the other, you know? Yeah, it, it had that 80s kind of like almost like uh, like street trash type vibe kind of going for it a little bit. It looked like just a very low budget, sleazy 80s exploitation. I guess even the font of like fried berry. It's like, okay, well, I'm getting into something that at least I appreciate and would would, would have watched or still watch, you know, right now too. And it, it definitely subverts expectations because you don't really know what it is about. You, you bury the lead quite well with uh, the marketing and everything yeah. like that, which is, makes me want, it, it makes the audience want to get into it. Yeah. And that, and that's the great thing about this marketing for this film, because most films, yeah, you can have a making of, and you can do, you know, you know, you got the poster, you got the trailer, you have the making of, and there's only so much you can do with certain films. And with this movie, there's like, there's no rules because this character's so wacky and crazy. So that's why with the marketing, we can do the condom commercial. We can do all these <laughs> yeah. uh, random memes and all that. It, it, it's like if, if Fry Barry, you know, stayed on earth, maybe this is all the scenarios that he would yeah. get himself into and, and stuff like that. I mean, we still have... Uh, sex education with Fry Barry still to come out, which is fucking <laughs> a bit. It's a bit too crazy, I think, maybe. But it's we're gonna release it. So it's, but it's, it's one of those films. You either like it or you don't. The people that like it will love it. The people who hate it will hate it, but they will speak about it, and that's cool. Because I mean, there's many films that we watch these days that you're just like, eh, and you won't even speak about it. You won't tell your friend about it because there's nothing to tell. So mm-hmm. I think with this film, even if you don't like it and we rub people the wrong way. I think that we'll still speak about it, and which is cool. I mean, you know, at, at, at least to speak of, speaking about speaking about the movie either way. Exactly. I mean, it's, no, uh, no, no press is bad press. Any press is good press at this point. So yeah. at least if somebody's talking about it, that's it's important. Now, uh, yeah. speaking of press and stuff like that, since of course you know everybody's in lockdown, you're obviously not traveling for haven't been traveling for film festivals. I would assume for since probably March or maybe February yeah, or something yeah. like that has, has promotion still been very strong for the film? Like, I mean, obviously you're, we're doing an interview right now, but has that been just the main way to spread the word at this point? Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, we were going to do what we were going to do. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, apart from going to the festivals, which would have mm-hmm. been amazing. I, I would have absolutely loved to, to go to Fantasia and screen my film, watch the audience, have the Q and a, mm-hmm and all that but obviously i mean we're living in the digital age as well i mean everybody does everything online anyway but i mean i think during this time it's just forced us to do it more so nothing's actually really stopped in in a sense of all the marketing that we've been pushing out all the people talking about it the festivals in fact if anything i think it's kind of of a blessing in disguise apart from going to the festivals mm-hmm. that i mean if you're screening a your movie at a festival you're looking at maybe 200 250 maybe 300 to sit in the cinema and watch mm-hmm. a movie that the thing is with the online thing like for brazil 
at Fantas Power, we had, uh, I think it was just under 4,000 people that watched the film. So that would never normally happen mm -hmm. in a normal screen. And so it's, I mean, when you make a movie, you want people to watch it. Yeah. So, so to know that 4,000 people have watched Fry Barry is amazing, is, is great that people are talking about it and people raving about it. And, and now, you know, the reviews from that festival and now all the reviews that have been coming out for Fantasia with all the critics. And we haven't even had, it hasn't even screened yet at Fantasia. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's great. So the amount of like podcasts and interviews and everything and with the marketing, it's, it's actually going really, 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 really well. That's exciting for my, for my end too, because I mean, having a digital film festival, I mean, um, I attended another one. It was like the Chattanooga Film Festival, small little genre film festival as well too. And that was a lot of fun. And now being a part of Fantasia, being able to talk to you, have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And you know, I'm sure this is one of yeah. a thousand that you'll have over the course of uh, the rest of the year. And what oh, you've been having I've given a, you some extra. I've definitely given you I know you, extra, you yeah, you, you get, I, pr I probed <laughs> you a little bit for some extra yeah. information and you, uh, you gave it up that easy. So it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, I'm I'm excited for um, I mean I'll I'll be posting my review soon. I want to kind of make this the companion piece for it. So uh, I mean I I enjoyed the film a lot. I thought it was just insane. And when I talk to people about this film, they're like, "Wow, I've never heard of that film." It's like, well, you know, it's, it's on the festival circuit and stuff. But they think like, "Hmm, oh, that's interesting." It's like, "Hey, it's a, a drug addict version of ET." They're like, "Well, well, you got me on drug addict." So all right, I'm, I'm, we're in on that. So. Uh, and it's great. And as a as a director, as a filmmaker, and you know, hearing these people, you know, enjoy your film, it's great. And it's my first film as well, so mm -hmm. it's it's great that I mean, you know, there's so many people that makes films that just get lost. Yeah, that just get lost in the, you know, that just get lost in the B movie market and stuff like that. So for people to rave on about it, and and you know, we have had critics saying, oh, it's a cult classic, and people that have watched it saying, oh, this is definitely going to be a, a cult classic and a cult film, and oh, it's a masterpiece and all that. I'm just like, fuck, are they talking about my film? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's my the, first the, film? The, <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, it's really great, and I'm very humble, you know, to, to receive that from, the, you know, people that have watched it, and it's, and it's amazing. I mean, we, there, there's so many people that make films that people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, if I didn't make Fried Barry, you know, there was this uh, post-apocalyptic film that I, I wanted to make and I actually made like a trailer a trailer for it. And I know I could have made that film really good, mm -hmm. but even if it is really good, it can still get lost in that B-movie market that nobody speaks about and nobody yeah. talks about. And that's why when I, when I came up with this idea for Fry Barry, I knew straight away, this is the one. I knew straight away, this is the one. And it was designed to be like a cult style film mm -hmm. and with the 80s and all that. So I think we, we really hit it on the head there to what it was meant to be. And it's designed in every way to, you know, to be that sort of film, whether it's through the, 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 through the lens or through editing and through music, you know, to have that tone and that right tone. And it's, it's that thing where it's like, if you don't, I mean, there, there was times where we edited certain scenes and it was so funny because of the editing. And I'm like, it's funny, but it's not the right tone. And I had to go back and go, we need to edit it this way to be more cinematic, to fit into that like cult style movie. Because if yeah. we do that, it's a bit too, it's a bit too left-sided for a, a different style of movie. So everything that was edited in a certain way for the movie, it's, it's, it's all like, you know, it's all part of the the big plan of the the feel and the tone of of, of the movie. Yeah, it, it definitely it progresses in an interesting way. I mean, we keep going back to the film and everything like that. You know, I, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll never stop shutting up at, shutting up about this film. So, <laughs> but good. Good. but just seeing like the kind of balls to the wall like first thirty minutes of the film, and then it kind of yeah. settles into kind of a different story you know you're 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 playing with different just kind of narratives and different themes and it, it has this like great ebb and flow of well you're going to get your eyes melted by the first part of this film and then you're going to feel this kind of like tenderness and then it turns into something else as well too so it's it, yeah. it, it the film never feels tired or boring or kind of giving you it gives you beats and breaths to have but there's still things going on in the film that you know, 
that are intriguing and bring up some, I mean, it's a cult, it's a cult film. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy film, but there's still some interesting, like, you know, familial concepts and things like that in there as well too, but it's very for surreal. Me, it's as well. time. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was also a thing of just keeping the audience entertained the whole time mm-hmm. and not being able to predict what's going to happen next. And that's why, like I've said to people, you need to watch it. You can't go quickly to the toilet. No. You can't go quickly get a drink. You got to watch it, or you'll be like, "Well, how the fuck did he get here?" Yeah, why so is he over it, here now? <laughs> yeah. So it's one. It's it's one of those that you you know you, with the audience going on this whole journey, you know, the, the the whole time and not and it's not predictable and you know trying to. I think it's a hard thing, you know, to try and keep an audience, you know, keep watching and then mm. it's it's keep them entertained and that was. Also, you know, a part of the bigger picture and the design to, to, to keep that, you know, to keep that going the whole time. So you, you, you really don't know where it's going to go, you know? Yeah. Well, I truly, I truly enjoyed fried, fried berry, Ryan. I thought that was a fun ride. And, and if that's the first of the eight experimental films that you've been working on, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing what the other seven might, you know, pop up in your head and create, create yeah. some, uh, some, some other, uh, when, once we get back to, uh, to work out there doing films and everything like that in, in, in the industry. It'll be interesting to see uh, what else you have, uh, have up your sleeve, dude. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Well, man. Thank well, you. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, well, with that being said, I'm, I'm going to kind of end the interview here, but is there, is there anything else you want to pitch out there to, to the world Any any uh, Fantasia information you want to pass along and uh, all that good stuff? Yeah, I think, well, if you want to know more about Fry Barry, definitely check uh, the trailer out. Just go to YouTube, type in uh, Fry Barry. Uh, we also got FryBarry.com. Also Twitter, Instagram, search for Ryan Kruger or Fry Barry, and it's there. And just follow the journey of uh, Fry Barry. And we have lots of cool marketing, funny things coming out. So, yeah, I think just keep a uh, check, check out for it. Yeah, I mean, I'll include all the all the links uh, in in the podcast during the interview and everything. But again, dude, thanks for taking the time. You know, I know we're 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 set we're seven hours apart, but I think we've grown closer together over over this yeah. almost hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, but thank yeah. you so much for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate it, and thank you for enjoying the film. Oh yes, and yeah, absolutely. having me on the show. It it was a great great conversation. Yeah, check out Fried Berry during the the Fantasia uh, Film Fest this year if you've already seen it continue to spread the word um and i guess the main world premiere i believe for you guys is the 20th of august i believe for for the festival it's either the 17th or the 20th it's right around there yeah it's, yeah, it's something like that but yeah i think just go on fantasia and you'll be able to yeah you'll be able to uh, check it out uh, yeah and if you watch the film let me know what you think and drop me yeah drop me a line i'm interested to hear what people have to say and uh, any questions by all means drop me a line excellent well again thank you ryan i appreciate your time right. check out fried berry check out uh, his other work when it when it comes uh, back around to making films and uh, we'll be back for, with another interview eventually uh, probably in the next week or so with uh, some other filmmakers here on some interview so see you guys later